Hi everyone. Welcome to the Now Testament. Here, we focus on what the Creator is doing in our time, while abiding by His principles and commands, so that we may have our testament in our time. In today's lesson, we want to discuss what it means to be a part of the family of the Creator of Heaven and Earth. A typical family normally consists of a father, a mother, children, and by extension grandparents, aunts, uncles, nieces, nephews, and so on. Where the family of the Creator is concerned, however, the Creator Himself is the Supreme Father of all, and His people are termed as being sons, with the Messiah being His chief son, the firstborn of every creature, the only one through whom we have access to the Father. Although the estimated world population is around 8 billion, not everyone in this tally can be declared to be a son of the Creator. Yes, we were all created by the Creator of heaven and earth. But the title of being called a son of the Creator, and hence being a part of the family of the Creator, is not automatic. Remember, we were all born in sin and shaped in iniquity. We were born sin-sick and hell-ready, warped in the ways of Lucifer himself, also, sonship in the Creator is actually an adoption that takes place according to the good pleasure of the will of the Creator of heaven and earth. As stated in Ephesians chapter 1, verses 3 to 9, where it states, Blessed be the God and Father of our Lord Jesus Christ, who hath blessed us with all spiritual blessings in heavenly places in Christ, according as he hath chosen us in him before the foundation of the world that we should be holy and without blame before him in love. Having predestined us unto the adoption of children by Jesus Christ to himself, according to the good pleasure of his will, to the praise of the glory of his grace, wherein he hath made us accepted in the beloved, in whom we have redemption through his blood, the forgiveness of sins, according to the riches of his grace, wherein he hath abounded toward us, in all wisdom and prudence, having made known unto us the mystery of his will, according to his good pleasure which he hath purposed in himself. So, having been predestined into this prestigious adoption, through the Messiah, we have to exercise faith in him that he has truly delivered us from the power of darkness, and has translated us into his kingdom. And that likewise, we have redemption through his blood, even the forgiveness of sins, Therefore, as many as received him, to them gave he power to become the sons of God, even to them that believe on his name, which were born, not of blood, nor of the will of the flesh, nor of the will of man, but of God. As stated in John chapter 1, verses 12 to 13. Now, there are some key signs that are associated with children of the Creator. The Messiah highlighted one such sign in Matthew chapter 12, verses 46 to 50, where it states, While he had talked to the people, behold, his mother and his brethren stood without, desiring to speak with him. Then one said unto him, Behold, thy mother and thy brethren stand without, desiring to speak with thee. But he answered and said unto him that told him, Who is my mother? And who are my brethren? And he stretched forth his hand toward his disciples and said, Behold, my mother and my brethren, for whosoever shall do the will of my Father which is in heaven, the same is my brother and sister and mother. As clearly outlined by the Messiah, if we are to be called his brothers or sisters, we must be doing the will of the Creator of heaven and earth. Children of the Creator do the will of the Creator on a daily basis. They say like the Messiah, I came not to do my own will, but the will of him who sent me. A true trait of the Son of the Creator. In Romans chapter 8, verses 14 to 17, it also highlights another sign of a child of the Creator, where it states, For as many as are led by the Spirit of God, they are the sons of God. For ye have not received the spirit of bondage again to fear, but ye have received the spirit of adoption, whereby we cry, Abba, Father, 
the Spirit itself beareth witness with our spirit that we are the children of God. And if children, then heirs, heirs of God, and joint heirs with Christ, if so be that we suffer with him, that we may be also glorified together. So, if the Spirit of the Creator is not leading us, we are then being led by the devil. Children of the Creator are led by his Spirit, his Spirit that led us to him in the first place, his Spirit that assures us that we are his children. And just to add, that if we do not have the Spirit of the Creator in us, then we do not belong to him. As highlighted in Romans chapter 8, verse 9, where it states, But ye are not in the flesh, but in the Spirit, if so be that the Spirit of God dwells in you. Now if any man have not the Spirit of Christ, he is none of his. It is through the Messiah that we both have access by one Spirit unto the Father. That is why we are no more strangers and foreigners, but fellow citizens with the saints and of the household of the Creator. As children of the Messiah, we are established on the foundation laid by the apostles and prophets, with the Messiah himself being the chief cornerstone, in whom everyone is perfectly framed together, so that we may grow into an holy temple in the Messiah, in whom we also are builded together, for inhabitation of the Creator through the Spirit. Finally, the most important feature of the family of the Creator is the demonstration of love towards each other. This is beautifully highlighted in 1 John chapter 4, verses 7 to 13, 16, 20 to 21, where it states, Beloved, let us love one another. For love is of God, and every one that loveth is born of God, and knoweth God. He that loveth not knoweth not God, for God is love. And this was manifested the love of God toward us because that God sent his only begotten Son into the world, that we might live through him. Herein is love, not that we loved God, but that he loved us, and sent his Son to be the propitiation for our sins. Beloved, if God so loved us, we ought also to love one another. No man hath seen God at any time. If we love one another, God dwelleth in us, and his love is perfected in us. Hereby know we that we dwell in him, and he in us, because he hath given us of his Spirit. And we have known and believed the love that God hath to us. God is love. And he that dwelleth in love dwelleth in God, and God in him. If a man say, I love God, and hates his brother, he is a liar. For he that loveth not his brother whom he hath seen, how can he love God whom he hath not seen? And this commandment we have from him, that he who loveth God, love his brother also. Consequently, this love will cause everyone to suffer when one brother suffers. Or, when one brother is honored, it causes everyone to rejoice with him. As we continue to journey along life's path today, humbly, let us keep 1 John chapter 3, verse 1, dear to our hearts, where it says, Behold, what manner of love the Father hath bestowed upon us, that we should be called the sons of God. We sincerely hope that this message was a blessing to you today. Remember to share it with your friends and family members. Encourage them to subscribe to our channel for other inspirational messages. Have a blessed day.